St. Edward, obviously being a saint, has many admirable qualities and virtues that he modeled throughout his life. But for me, I think the, the overarching virtue of his would be humility. St. Edward did not want to be king of England. He actually wanted to be a Benedictine monk. But after his brother died young, uh, before he could have children, the crown fell to St. Edward. And so wanting this very introverted, private, quiet life of prayer, he now becomes this extremely public, very busy figure uh, of governance, right? And so it's the exact opposite of what the poor man wanted. But he didn't shy away from it, right? He, he felt originally that his vocation was to be this a Benedictine monk, uh, but then he felt in his discernment that now the Lord was asking him to be king of England. And so in humility, he accepts this vocation that he did not want, that he probably did not feel qualified for, that he certainly was probably embarrassed by the pomp and circumstance around it and, and all the, the attention that it brought him. But in humility, he accepts this role. And even in his uh, years as king, he was known for his kindness to the poor. So most of his iconography is in this icon we have here. Um, and in other ones, he's depicted, he's depicted holding a ring for this very famous story of a, a poor beggar that came asking him for alms or for money. And not having any money on him, he takes off his signet ring that says he's the king. And he gives it away to this poor person that he didn't care about the trappings and, and all the stuff that came with being king. He knew his vocation was to be king and, and through his vocation that he should be taking care of the poor. Uh, there was a great period of peace during his reign. It wasn't until the end of his reign as others started to fight over who would be the next uh, monarch. That's them. Violence started to break out, uh, but at least while he was king, he didn't engage in, in wars or battles or try to increase the kingdom. Uh, he just tried to do right by his people, and his people loved him for it. Also in humility, you know, Edward always felt a call, a vocation to celibacy. And so he was felt, I guess, required to have a queen, and so Edith of Wessex, was his queen. We actually named our bus after her. Our bus's name is Edith. Uh, not widely known, but that's what we did. Um, and uh, he never had any relations with her because he felt that he still, the Lord was still asking him to live out a celibate life. Um, so he had no heirs to take the crown. Uh, but again, he, he went through the, the smells and the bells because he had to, but still with all this great Humility. So I think that's the overarching virtue that we can all learn from our patron as we celebrate his feast. How are we in humility following the Lord? Do we shy away from the big and the small vocations that the Lord asks us to do? Do we say, oh, that's, that's not for me. I, sh I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't serve in this way. I shouldn't help here. I shouldn't do this because I... I don't have those gifts or those talents or whatever. Do, do we let those lies prevent us from doing what the Lord is asking us to do? In humility, how are we uh, just living our life? Do we enjoy having a lot of attention on us? Or do we humbly just try to stay out of the way and in the background, but still doing what the Father asks of us? Right? So maybe these are all good things for us to reflect on with the help of our patron and through his prayers to see how can we humbly follow Jesus? How can we in humility do what the Lord is asking us to do and through our humility grow closer and closer to him who should be the center of our life, Jesus? And are we becoming more and more like him by following Jesus, obviously, but through the modeling of all the saints, not just St. Edward, but all the many saints that show us how to live out this holiness. Edward did it. We can follow him, uh, ultimately keeping Christ at the center of us.